Let's face it, sometimes we all get in that dinner rut where we just don't know what we want to cook or even what we're in the mood for. So my hope for today's video is to bring you some inspiration. These are my top 20 dinner ideas and they're all super easy to make, super simple, basic ingredients. And my promise by the end of this video is that you will find a recipe that inspires you to try tonight. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Let's get into these top 20 dinner recipes. All right, y'all, I think I lied before because this recipe might be my favorite. First of all, pizza is my favorite food group, and this was the easiest one to make. Can I get an amen? Okay, anyways, so you're just gonna pick up a loaf of this French bread. Most grocery stores have it for a dollar or two, and then I just like to slice mine in half and then slice it in half long ways as well. I did use a couple tablespoons of butter from my fridge. I'm gonna melt that down along with some garlic salt and some Italian seasoning. This step is completely optional. You do not have to do this, and this recipe will still be delicious. So I'm just gonna brush each little piece of my bread here with that garlic and butter and I'm gonna pre-bake this at 425 just for anywhere from three to five minutes because I really like for my French bread to kind of get toasty on the inside so that way it's just not completely soft before my cheese melts at the end so now of course we're gonna need some pizza sauce so I'm just gonna get my pizza sauce on there spread it all out and this again is another recipe you can totally customize I love this because for our family of four, it's perfect. Everybody can have whatever they want on there. So I just did two with just the cheese and then two with pepperoni for my husband and I. Bake these in the oven for about 15 minutes and this is so good. If you have salad stuff, serve it with a salad. I just love any kind of pizza with some ranch. So that's what we had. You can hear that crust is so crunchy and crispy on the bottom, yet the middle of that French bread is still soft and pillowy and it's just, it is so good. This also makes a perfect after school snack. So when I was kind of flipping through to find what recipes I wanted to try first for this little series, Y'all, you could not go through a church cookbook without seeing like 10 different chicken casseroles. And most of them included this Pepperidge Farm stuffing mix. So that's what I'm using. I'm adding it to a bowl with a stick of butter melted. And I'm just gonna mix that to combine the butter all over that stuffing mix. Then I'm gonna get my nine by 13 dish out. And you're just gonna add about half of this mixture to the bottom. Next on top of that stuffing mixture, you just add about two or three cups of chopped cooked chicken. And I actually did use a rotisserie chicken this night, which made this come together that much quicker. I'm adding one carton of sour cream and then one can of cream and chicken soup. I'm gonna get that all mixed up together and that's gonna go right over top of the chicken. Flare the chicken on top of the stuffing and then that sour cream and cream of chicken soup mixture goes on top of that. And then next you bring back over that other half of the stuffing mix, add that over top of the sour cream and cream of chicken. And then you're gonna take about two to three cups of chicken broth and you're just gonna pour that all over top of the stuffing. All that stuffing mix is gonna soak it right up. You don't want it to be dry, so just kinda eyeball it. And this is going into the oven at 350 for about 30 minutes. And again, this is so nostalgic for me because I swear my grandmother used to make this all the time after church. I just served mine over top of some rice with some green beans on the side. And I'm telling y'all, this hit the spot this night. All right, so first we're gonna get started with these white chicken enchiladas. So obviously right now I'm just getting some of that rotisserie chicken into a large bowl. So I'm just adding a little bit of softened cream cheese to my chicken. And then I'm gonna add about one cup of shredded Mexican blend cheese. Just add that in with the chicken and cream cheese. I gave that a stir to get it all combined. And this is gonna be our filling for our enchiladas. Next, I'm just gonna bring over my nine by 13, give that a quick little spray, and then we're gonna roll up our enchiladas. 
I'm just using these low carb tortillas, but any kind that you wanna use will be fine. Now I'm not the best at rolling these up, but I did the best that I could. Just added a couple scoops of that filling in there, and this makes eight tortillas, which is how many came in my little pack there. So that was perfect. I'm just gonna wrap each one up. I fold the two ends and then just kinda hold it all together as I roll it up until I get all eight in my dish. All right, next we're gonna come over here to my skillet and we're gonna make the most delicious enchilada sauce and it could not get any easier either. So I just added a few tablespoons of butter to my skillet, added a few tablespoons of flour and we're just gonna whisk that around and let that flour cook down for just a couple minutes. And then next we're gonna add in one packet of taco seasoning. So we're gonna add in that taco seasoning, kinda whisk that around as well. It will look a little bit clumpy at this point, but that is okay. Next, we're gonna pour in some chicken broth and continue to whisk until all of those little lumps are smooth and your sauce starts to come together. We're also gonna add in some of that shredded Mexican blend cheese. We're gonna add sour cream and then one small can of the diced green chilies. And I'll just go ahead and tell you, this sauce is not spicy at all. On a scale of one to 10, I'd maybe give it a two. Like you can taste the peppers in there, but it's really no spice factor. My kids loved it. And I'll also go ahead and tell you, my oldest said the sauce tastes just like the sauce in the Taco Bell case it is. If you've ever had one of those, it really does taste similar to that. So you can see how the sauce comes together. It'll be nice and creamy and smooth. So next, I'm just gonna bring back over all of our little rolled up tortillas and geladas, and we're gonna pour that sauce right over top. Does this not look delicious already? Next, we're gonna top with that remaining Mexican blend cheese. I also had a little bit of sharp cheddar that I went ahead and added just a little bit more. I felt like I needed a little bit more cheese on here. And this is gonna bake about 25 minutes at 350. I did broil it the last five minutes just to get that cheese on top nice and golden and bubbly. Y'all, this was so good. Like I said earlier, probably one of my favorite, if not my favorite, white chicken enchilada recipes. So easy to make, especially if you have that rotisserie chicken. And first up, we have my new favorite way to cook potato soup. So for this potato soup, y'all, it seriously could not be any easier. It is my new favorite. Anyway, you're gonna need one 32 ounce bag of the cubed hash browns. Dump that into your slow cooker. I also have a frozen bag of chopped onions. Just gonna eyeball about a half a cup. Next, we're gonna add in three cups of chicken broth. And then you're gonna need one can of cream of chicken soup. Of course, you can do whatever seasonings you want. I'm just gonna sprinkle some in. A good bit because really, this is almost everything in this soup. Y'all are gonna be so shocked at how this comes out at the end. So I'm gonna give this a good stir and I cook mine on high for about three to four hours, but about 30 minutes before we're ready to eat, when those potatoes are tender, we're also gonna add in one block of cream cheese. And that is it. I'll see y'all in a little bit to add that cream cheese. And y'all, I can't wait to show you how creamy and just good this comes out. Alrighty, so I didn't film adding in that cream cheese, but that's pretty self-explanatory. I just kind of cubed mine up, added it in. It only took about 30 minutes to melt. I kind of whisked it around a little bit to kind of help it. And look how smooth and velvety this potato soup is. I think this is the perfect, even just a base for potato soup. You can kind of customize it to whatever your family likes. So we're just gonna plate it up bowl it up I should say and then whatever toppings you want we added some cheese bacon bits I happen to love croutons in my potato soup if you've never tried that I promise you should it's so good but this was delicious and this is definitely my new go-to potato recipe potato soup recipe just because it's so easy to throw together with minimal ingredients 
Alrighty, y'all, got an easy one for you today. So we're gonna start with two pounds of stew meat. I'm just gonna get this into the slow cooker. Next on top of that, we're gonna add one packet of brown gravy mix. Next, we're also gonna add in one of these packets of the beefy onion soup mix. We're gonna add one can of cream and mushroom. We want lots of gravy in there because when we get home, we're just gonna do some mashed potatoes, some fried okra, and dinner will be ready to go. So I have my crock pot on low, and I'm just gonna let it cook anywhere from about six to eight hours. Alrighty y'all, our beef tips have been cooking all day. They look delicious, plenty of that gravy down there. And I just made up some quick mashed potatoes, AKA Bob Evans. Feel free to make your own if you so choose. But that's gonna be dinner, and it's gonna be delicious. Some of those mashed potatoes. Let's get some of these yummy beef tips. And these were so easy. There you go, easy as that. Beef tips and mashed potatoes is what's for dinner tonight. Y'all give this one a try. All right, next up we have chicken alfredo. And I have to say, this might be the easiest one in this whole video. So I just have my nine by 13 here, and I'm just gonna dump in a whole box of rotini. You can use whatever kind of pasta you want. You don't even have to cook it first, just dump it in the pan. Next, I have about one to two cups of cooked and shredded chicken. I'm gonna dump that in, and then you're just gonna dump in one jar of your favorite Alfredo sauce. I'm actually using some homemade Alfredo just because I prefer it. I will have that video um, with the recipe linked down below if you wanna check that out. But either way, dump in your Alfredo sauce and then also some chicken broth. And all you're gonna do is give that a quick little mix and this is gonna be covered and baked in the oven. Now I did pull mine out after about 30 minutes and checked a noodle. I went and added a little bit more chicken broth, gave it another stir and popped it back in the oven. Once your noodles are cooked to al dente, I just sprinkled on some mozzarella cheese, some that I had left over in a little bag, along with some Parmesan cheese, and I stuck it back into the oven just for about five minutes until that cheese got all melty. I also topped it with a little bit of fresh parsley just to make it all cute, and then it was time to serve. And y'all, I think I might do my Alfredo like this all the time, especially when we're busy, just because it can kind of keep warm in the oven, your noodles don't dry out, and people can just come and get their supper whenever they're ready. I served ours with these little Texas toast breadsticks, which we absolutely loved. This dinner was delicious. All right, first up today, we have chicken and stuffing and stick of butter rice. So I'm just gonna have y'all cooking along kind of a whole dinner with me for this recipe. First, I just have my nine by 13 here, and I had about three chicken breasts that I just cubed up into kind of bite-sized pieces and got, the, got those all evenly spread out in there. And then to a separate bowl, we're gonna take two cans of cream of chicken. I really like the ones with the cream of chicken with herbs. I think that's really good. Get that into a bowl. We're gonna mix that with some heavy cream and some milk. Then I'm just gonna bring over that soup mixture and just pour that all over top of our cubed chicken breast. And then next you're gonna take one box of stovetop stuffing mix. I just like to use the chicken, cause I'm using chicken. Just kinda sprinkle that all over top. And then I didn't film this part, but I'm adding a little bit of chicken broth over top as well. And then I'm just gonna cover it really tightly with some tin foil, and that's going into our oven. And while that is baking, let's go ahead and get that rice working. So I have my baking dish, I'm just dumping in some white rice. Then also we're gonna add one can of French onion soup, or this is actually a French onion soup packet just mixed with water. And then we're gonna dump in one can of beef consomme. And then lastly, you add a stick of butter, like the name says, and this, believe it or not, soaks up all this liquid. I honestly can't believe I've never made this before because I will definitely be, baking, be making this again. So I'm also gonna cover it tightly with full and it's going into the oven as well. There I am just adding the butter. I'm gonna kinda give it a little stir. This could not be any easier to make. Y'all let me know if you've ever tried this. I know it can go by a few different names, but 
stick of butter rice. That's pretty fitting to me. And here in just a second, when I pull it out, you will see how fluffy this rice is. I didn't even stir it at all while it was in the oven. This is the first time here. It just comes right up. It's super fluffy, super moist, and oh my goodness, so flavorful. So now we're just gonna plate up that chicken and stuffing. I will say it was really good. That chicken was nice and tender, obviously super creamy, and it went perfectly with that stick of butter rice. I just served it with an, with an easy bag of steamable green beans, and it was so good. Definitely a delicious meal for a day when you don't really feel like cooking. This is an easy chicken fried rice, and I have to tell you, this was Darren's favorite. So first, we're just gonna again, start with our skillet and some butter. We're gonna add a little bit of garlic this time, and then this time I did dice a whole medium onion. And we're just gonna let that saute until it starts to soften up a little bit. Next, I'm bringing over three cups of already cooked rice. That's something if you have some leftover rice from another dinner from the night before, this is gonna be absolutely perfect with that rotisserie chicken. We're just gonna stir in that rice. Next, we're gonna bring over about two cups of that rotisserie chicken. And I did chop the chicken a little bit more for this recipe. And then also we're gonna use some more of those frozen peas and carrots. Again, however much you want, just add those right in. And we're just gonna give everything a nice stir. All right, so here's the secret to making this dish taste like a restaurant. You do not wanna skip this part. You're gonna add a little, small, tiny drizzle of toasted sesame oil. This sends this over the top so good and then also i had this fried rice seasoning you don't have to use this the seasoning is optional but that sesame oil is not if you don't have the seasoning just add a little salt and pepper you can add garlic onion whatever you want but we're just going to stir those all together once i have everything really combined you're just going to kind of scoot everything over in your skillet and then we're going to add two eggs and we're going to scramble those up over on the side and then we're just gonna mix it in, just like they do in the Japanese restaurants. The last thing we're gonna add to this dish is just a few splashes of soy sauce. This could not be any easier to throw together. And if you already have your rotisserie chicken and rice made ahead of time, seriously, I mean, it takes 10, 15 minutes. And it is so good as well. My husband said it tastes just like the Japanese restaurant that we always do when we're feeling to go. But you don't even have to do that with this recipe. And let's just talk about the price of it. It is so cheap to make. We topped ours with just a little bit of green onion and then some store-bought yum yum sauce or shrimp sauce. And this seriously hit the spot. So delicious. First up, we have a creamy tomato tortellini soup. So we're gonna start with just a large pot. We're gonna do a few tablespoons of oil in there, and then we're gonna saute one medium chopped onion. We're just gonna saute that for about five minutes or so until you get some good color on there and your onion starts to soften up a little bit. And then we're also gonna add in about a good, a good tablespoon of minced garlic. We just add that in at the last minute so it doesn't burn, but give it just a few seconds to kind of open up its flavor and make this dish delicious. Next, we're gonna add in about four cups of chicken broth. By the way, all of my recipes are always in my description box. Next, we're gonna add one can of petite diced tomatoes and one can of tomato sauce. Next, I'm just adding a good sprinkle of salt, pepper, and then also about a tablespoon and a half of Italian seasoning. We're also gonna add some heavy cream in here, give this a nice stir, and we're just gonna bring this up to a simmer. 
So once our sauce has been kind of simmering for about 15 minutes, you wanna give it a taste. And I actually went back and added about two tablespoons of sugar just to kind of balance out that acidity of all those tomatoes. Then we're gonna add in one bag of cheese tortellini, and we're just gonna let that cook about five to seven minutes. They don't really take long at all to get done. And then I added one cup of cheese. I'm just using this five blend Italian style cheese. You could use Parmesan or whatever you like. And I cannot get over how quick and easy this meal was to throw together. I literally had it done from start to finish within 30 minutes. So time to plate it up. I just served mine with some breadsticks, topped with a little more cheese and fresh basil. And all of those flavors together was just so good. We all love this meal and I think y'all will too. So to the bottom of our slow cooker, I'm gonna try to add half this can of Rotel and just spread that around as best you can. All right, so now I have one onion sliced and three bell peppers sliced. So I'm gonna place half of each of these in the next layer. Next, we're gonna just sprinkle on about four cloves of minced garlic. Next, on top of that, we're just gonna lay three chicken breasts. We're gonna add two and a half teaspoons of chili powder, two teaspoons of ground cumin, one teaspoon paprika, and three fourths a teaspoon of ground coriander. We're just gonna mix everything together. Also, I forgot to add a little pepper and salt. Now we're just gonna sprinkle on that seasoning mixture right over the chicken. Next, we're gonna add the remaining tomatoes, or rotel, and then the remaining peppers and onions. All right, and I'm gonna cook mine on high for about two or three hours until that chicken is cooked through. All right, so everything's been cooking about four hours. So I'm just gonna shred up this chicken and the instructions on the original recipe say to ladle out some of this liquid. I guess it's more than you need. They said ladle out about a cup and just discard it. And now you can either slice up your chicken, you can take it out or just shred it up. But I think we'll be fine with just shredding it up because we're gonna put ours into tortillas anyway. to a small little bowl. We're just gonna mix together about two tablespoons of honey and then two tablespoons of lime juice. All right, and then we're just gonna pour that mixture over the chicken. I'm gonna toss it around a little bit. And we are ready to eat. Like I said, we're gonna serve ours with some tortillas, but you could just put it over some chips and do it like nachos. We do that kind of thing a lot of time. All right, y'all, here are those chicken fajitas all plated up. They look delicious. We like to top ours with just a little bit of shredded cheese, sour cream. You could also do lettuce, cilantro. They have a little bit of guacamole on the side. You could do black olives. Basically, whatever you want on your fajitas or tacos. I think these are gonna be so good. I love all the fresh ingredients that this recipe uses. So yeah, let's dig right into these chicken fajitas. Next up, we have this Paula Deen chicken casserole that surprisingly I had never made before. I saw this all over Pinterest, so I knew I wanted to try it. So first, you're just gonna cook up one 16 ounce box of penne pasta, just according to the box directions. And then over on the side, we're gonna make this cheesy sauce that's gonna go in it. So I have some butter, some minced garlic, some diced onion, and I'm gonna saute that for a few minutes, and then we're gonna add about two or three tablespoons of flour. And that's just gonna help thicken our sauce a little bit. 
Next, we're gonna add some milk. We're gonna whisk all that together to make sure all those clumps and everything are nice and smooth. We're also gonna add some sour cream and then just your seasoning of choice. Again, I went with the Kinders. I don't know why I was just filling the Kinders today for this video, I guess. And then also we're gonna add about two cups of shredded cheese. You can use any kind that you like. I chose to shred up some Colby Jack cheese and that worked really nicely in this chicken casserole. I've just drained my pasta noodles and then over here I have a nine by 13 baking dish. We're just gonna go ahead and pour the penne noodles in there. And next I'm gonna add about two cups of cooked chicken. Now, since we are doing pantry meals, I actually use canned chicken. I think canned chicken works perfectly in recipes like this. And then next I'm just gonna bring over that cheesy sauce, pour that right over our chicken and noodles give everything a stir to combine really well, and then you wanna to top with another half a cup to a cup of cheese. And again, you can use any cheese that you like. I actually went with some pepper jack. I thought that would just be really good on top, add a tiny bit of spice, and it was. It was so perfect. This just bakes in the oven for about 30 minutes on 350. Again, I'll have all these recipes typed out below for you. And this was just the most perfect, weeknight pantry meal. Most of these things I always have in my pantry or my fridge. How many times do we have a little bit of cheese, a little bit of this kind, a little bit of that kind? This is the perfect way to just use that up. Whatever kind of pasta you have also would work really well in this recipe. We just served ours up with a little side salad and you could not get any easier, but it was just perfect, the perfect little dinner. First up, I made a French onion beef casserole. So of course, we're gonna start with one pound of ground beef. I'm just gonna brown that up, and then we're gonna add in one packet of the Lipton onion soup mix. I think this was the beef flavor, but just the regular or the beef flavor will be just fine. So I'm gonna sprinkle that on, and also we're gonna add one cup of sour cream, and then one can of cream of mushroom soup. I'm just gonna give everything a good stir to combine. We're also going to add in just a few splashes of Worcestershire sauce that's going to help deepen these flavors a little bit. And honestly, this sauce at this point is done. You could just serve it just like this over noodles or rice, even mashed potatoes, and it would be delicious. But we are going to take it up just another notch. I think y'all are really going to enjoy that. So over on the side, I do have one bag of just regular egg noodles, and I'm just going to cook these according to the package drip directions, maybe minus about a minute, because we are gonna put this into the oven, so they'll continue to bake along with all of the liquid from the sauce and everything. So I just let my sauce continue to kind of simmer on low on the side. I actually just popped a lid on there and just let it sit there while our noodles were finishing up cooking. And when they're done, of course, I drained them and then just brought those right over and stirred those into the sauce. Just gave everything a really good mix. Got all those noodles all nice and coated. Also at this point, if your sauce and noodle mixture seems a little bit thick, you can add just a little splash of milk in here. And also at this point, I went ahead and gave it a little taste to make sure I didn't wanna add any extra seasonings or any extra liquid, like I said, but this time it actually turned out perfect. Next, I just have a greased baking dish over here. I'm gonna bring over our French onion noodle mixture and just add that right in and then get that all spread out. Also, I topped ours with a little bit of cheese. You could use Colby Jack. I had some mozzarella, so that's what I used. I'm just gonna sprinkle on probably a cup or so, which by the way, all the full recipes are always typed out down below in my description box, so make sure you check down there. And then on top of the cheese, we gotta have some of those crispy fried onions. So I'm just gonna add on probably a cup or so of those. Like I always say, just measure with your heart on this. We love that crunchy topping, so I probably added a good bit. 
Once we have all of those yummy toppings on there, we are gonna bake this in the oven at 350, but it only needs to bake 15 or 20 minutes. All we're really doing is melting that cheese. Everything else is already cooked in there. And this is so good, y'all. So easy and so quick to make. Those noodles are nice and soft. We have that creamy, ooey gooey cheese, and then that salty crunch from our little crispy fried onions on top. If you love French onion flavors, this is gonna be a must try. Next up, we have this chicken tot pie. And this is the perfect meal to make at the end of a busy day. All the flavors of traditional chicken pot pie with a tater tot crust. What's not to love? So we're gonna start with a skillet, of course. I have a couple tablespoons of butter. And then another little shortcut is I use some of these frozen diced onions. I only need it a little bit, that way I don't have to chop an entire onion. I just poured some of those into my skillet and they will saute up just like a fresh onion would. At this point, I'm also gonna add a couple tablespoons of flour and a little bit of salt and pepper to season it up. And I'm just gonna cook that three or four minutes to cook down that flour and the butter and this is gonna be the perfect flavorful base for that chicken pot pie filling. Next, I'm going to whisk in some milk and also some chicken broth. I'm just gonna kinda slowly pour it in and continually whisk all that. It's gonna be smooth and it will start to thicken up. All right, next we're gonna add our veggies to our filling. You can add whatever veggies you prefer in your pot pie or no veggies at all if you don't want any, but these frozen peas and carrots make this so easy and again, just come together so easily and so quickly. We're also gonna bring back over that rotisserie chicken and I have left this rotisserie chicken in kind of bigger pieces and that way it doesn't dry out as quick until you go to use it if you're not using it, you know, for a day or two. But for this recipe, I did go ahead and break it up into more bite-sized pieces. Once we have everything combined, we're just gonna bring over a baking dish. And by the way, I actually halved this recipe and it was perfect for our family of four and we had a little bit of leftovers. So just saying this recipe, it does make quite a bit, but we're gonna get that filling in our baking dish and then we're gonna top with tater tots. And I just like to put mine on in one even layer. If you wanna line your tater tots up and make it all pretty, you can do that as well. But this is going into the oven for about 45 minutes and then we're just gonna pull it out. And this part is optional, but the recipe I was following topped with a little bit of sharp cheddar cheese. And we love cheese, so I thought we would try it. And it was so good. The tater tots actually got very crispy, even with the cheese on top. It only bakes about five more minutes after you add the cheese. Once that cheese is completely melted, you wanna serve it up nice and hot. This one actually surprised us a little bit. I knew that we would enjoy it, but even the flavor was a lot more than even I anticipated. So this is a perfect weeknight, super easy meal to add to your rotation. We're just gonna start by browning up one pound of ground beef. While our ground beef is browning up, I'm also cooking up one bag of the refrigerated tortellini. You can usually find this around your deli area in your grocery store, and you just wanna get the cheese version, and the directions in this recipe I'm following say to cook it one less minute than the directions say on the back of the bag. I guess because we are gonna bake it, so it's gonna continue to cook. Our ground beef is browned up, so now I'm just gonna add one jar of marinara sauce. Of course, we love Rayo's, it's the best. We're just gonna add that right in with the ground beef. Get just a little bit of water to get all that out of my jar. Go ahead and turn that burner off, and then we're just gonna stir this all together. And that pasta, y'all, is only gonna cook about three minutes. We don't want it to get too mushy, and really you're supposed to use a large skillet and add the pasta in along with this but I'm just gonna combine it all in a large bowl because my large skillet is being used by something else. 
All right, our tortellini is done. I'm just gonna dump that in. I'm just gonna toss everything a little bit. Already looks so good. And I just had a thought as well, this could totally be a meatless option. Of course, it's not vegan. We're gonna add some cheese and the tortellini has cheese, but if you wanted a meatless option, I think this would make a great one. All right, so let's go make our second little layer. All right, so I just have a separate bowl here and I have one block of softened cream cheese in there. You can let it come to room temperature. I just pop mine in the microwave for a few seconds. To that, I'm just gonna add about half a cup of ricotta cheese. You could also use cottage cheese if you have that on hand. We're also gonna add a teaspoon of garlic powder, a teaspoon of salt, a teaspoon of onion powder, and we're just gonna mix all that together. So next, I just have my nine by 13. You need to spray your dish. I know how to spray, so when all else fails, butter. It's only a little bit. It looks like a lot, but I'm gonna spread it all out on this dish. So first, going in is about half of our tortellini and meat sauce. Just gonna get that all spread out. My audience is over here eyeballing it. Tell them hey. Hey y'all. <laughs> okay, Paula Dean. <laughs> hey y'all. <laughs> hey y'all, I'm Paula Dean. Next, we're gonna bring over that ricotta and cream cheese mixture and we're gonna add the whole mixture for our middle layer. And just kinda spread it out the best we can. How's that freshly shredded mozzarella? It's delicious. Is it better than already shredded? Mm -hmm. Spread out that layer. Then next, we're just coming back on top with the other half of our tortellini. This definitely reminds me of a different take on lasagna. Same flavors, but a little bit different. Super easy to throw together too. Now it's time for that mozzarella we shredded up. We're just gonna add about a cup on top or however much you want. Measure with your heart, honey. Get it all the way to the sides, or almost. Y'all, does it bug you when anybody makes pizza and they put all the toppings like in the center of the pizza and you have like a four inch crust? That's one of those things that just bugs me. It's gotta be even. You gotta give everybody the same amount. It's gotta be fair. Next on top of that, we're also gonna add about a half a cup of shredded Parmesan. And we are ready for the oven. I'm gonna get this covered with some full, and it's going into the oven at 350 for only about 30 minutes. All right, y'all, here it is on the oven. It looks and smells delicious. We're just gonna top it with a little bit of parsley to make it purdy. All right, let's get this plated up. All right, y'all, we're just serving ours up with a little side salad and some little uh, non-bread bites that we toasted up like garlic bread. Looks so good. All right, let's give it a try. Mmm, that is delicious. Really creamy, perfect flavors in there. That tortellini is just cooked perfectly. It's not too, too soft. Nice and cheesy. Came together super quick. Great for weeknight. Perfect. Y'all give it a try. So tonight we're gonna make Swiss chicken. You may have made this recipe before, it's really good, but if you haven't, you need to try it. So in my slow cooker, I've just got three chicken breasts that I cleaned and trimmed up. The original recipe calls for six, but for our family of four, three good-sized chicken breasts is plenty. Six will be way too much way too much so just keep that in mind but anyways i have my chicken in there now we're gonna mix half a cup of milk and one can of cream of chicken Next, right on top of that, we're gonna add about six slices of Swiss cheese, or however much cheese your heart desires. Although your heart might disagree in a few years, but we ain't gonna talk about that. This is good, okay? I'm not claiming it's healthy. Next, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the packet from Stovetop uh, Stuffing Mix, and I like the chicken flavor. We're just gonna sprinkle that all on top of the cheese. And my camera's going dead, we better hurry. Okay, I'm just gonna kinda 
Move that around to get those seasonings mixed up evenly. All right, and lastly, you're gonna take a fourth of a cup of melted butter or half a stick and pour it over your stuffing mix. And you wanna kinda get it as moist as possible. I actually melted a whole stick of butter. Oh Lord, call the food police, cause I like it to be moist. Like I said, I don't want it to be dry, I mean, a little dry pieces in here. But you can also add a little bit of chicken broth if you would rather not add butter. But like I said, I said it was delicious, not healthy. We're gonna pop the lid on. This is gonna cook either on low for five to six hours. I'm gonna do mine on high about two to three hours. All right, y'all, here is the Swiss chicken. Cooked on high for three hours and then I turned it down to low, probably for another hour. But right now it's on warm and it smells so good in here. It smells like a little mini Thanksgiving and it's looking good and cheesy and all golden so i'm just going to make us some rice to put this over top and we're going to have dinner all right it's time to eat i got my rice right here we're going to put this swiss chicken right on top let me bring y'all closer so you can see how yummy chicken is nice and tender down there And there we go, Swiss chicken. Like I said, it's like Thanksgiving, mini Thanksgiving in a bowl. If you haven't tried this crock pot recipe, you need to try it. Next up, we have a Dorito casserole. This one is so good. And first, I'm actually gonna start by sauteing up some frozen onions. I just like to get some color and some flavor on those. And then of course, we're gonna add in our pound of ground beef and just get that pretty much browned up. Um, if your ground beef has a good bit of fat on it, you'll want to drain it. But this one didn't have too much, just a little bit. So I'm just taking a paper towel and just getting out some of that fat. Next, we're gonna add in one packet of your favorite taco seasoning. And I've mentioned to y'all before, the Taco Bell one, I don't know. We can just tell a difference. I think the Taco Bell one is just the best. So we're gonna add that in. Also, one can of mild Rotel. I didn't add quite the whole can. And then a little bit of frozen corn. I'm just gonna pour that right in, frozen and everything. I did also add in some minced garlic in here. Not sure what happened to that little clip. I added in minced garlic and then also we're gonna add in a little bit of sour cream and some shredded cheese. Just add everything in and give it a nice little stir. And you just wanna let this simmer just about five minutes just to kinda let everything come together. And just like the other recipe, if your mixture seems a little bit too thick, you can just add a splash of milk. So that's what I ended up doing to this. And now we're ready to get it in our baking dish. So over on the side, first we're gonna add a crust to the bottom. And we're just gonna be using a crescent sheet for that. So you just wanna roll it out and just kind of press it down gently in your baking dish. And then next, on top of that, we're just gonna take some of the regular nacho cheese Doritos and crush that on top of our crescent sheet. You really won't know it's down here. It just basically adds a little bit of flavor. I'm using my gloves, y'all, because I didn't wanna get all that orange dust all over my hands. And then next, we're gonna bring over our ground beef mixture and just spread that all over top of our Doritos and our crescent sheet. Next, on top of the ground beef, we're gonna add some shredded cheese, just a little bit more, probably a cup or so. I actually had Darren come add my cheese on here because in just a second, we're gonna add just a little bit more of that Dorito topping on top of the cheese. And there's me pointing that he missed a spot. I'm so particular, I want my casseroles, I've told y'all this, everybody has to have an even amount. 
So anyway, once we got the cheese on there, just how I wanted it, we're gonna add another little layer of those crunchy Doritos. And this is going into the oven at 350, again, only for 10, 15 minutes, just to melt that cheese and get everything combined. This was so good, y'all. This is the perfect little switch up for taco night. I love that crunchy topping and that little crescent dough crust on the bottom just adds a hint of sweetness. And of course, you can top this with all of your favorite taco toppings. We added a little bit of sour cream, some green onion for some color. You could also do some lettuce, and then just a little bit of chopped tomatoes. Y'all have to give this one a try and let me know how you like it. All right, next up we have a garlic and herb pork tenderloin with veggies, and this one has a semi-homemade shortcut in here as well. So I'm just gonna start by getting our potatoes, onion and carrot all washed up and chopped up. We're just gonna add that to a large bowl. We're gonna drizzle just a little bit of olive oil in there and then whatever seasonings you like. I added salt, pepper, and I think probably, yes, a little bit of garlic in there as well. Then next, I'm gonna bring over a nine by 13. I'm just using this Smithfield roasted garlic and herb pork tenderloin. That's the little semi-homemade item I was talking about. Get that right in the center, then place all of those delicious veggies all around that pork tenderloin. I'm also going to go in with some fresh herbs. I believe I had some rosemary and some thyme and just kind of stick those in around your pork tenderloin. And this is just going to bake in your oven until our pork tenderloin reaches its perfect internal temperature and those potatoes and veggies are soft. I will have the full recipe for this down below in the description box, so make sure y'all check that out. But this is perfect. That pork tenderloin is so moist and juicy, and all of those veggies just add to the flavor. This is the perfect fall weeknight meal. So tonight for dinner, I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this Marry Me Chicken. It's a super popular recipe. I'm not sure if I've ever made it though. I know I've wanted to, I just hadn't ever done it. But we're obviously gonna do a slow cooker version. So first, I'm just gonna get some chicken breast in my slow cooker. I have about four chicken breasts I'm gonna use. All right, next we're gonna add our seasonings. You can really season this with lots of different things, but I'm gonna use some onion powder. Just give it a little sprinkle of that. Also gonna do a little bit of garlic powder. We're gonna put some fresh garlic in here too. So just a little bit of that. Let's do some Italian seasoning. Get a good bit of that in there. And then I've seen a few people use some crushed red pepper flakes. I thought that sounded really good. I'm not gonna put too many. I don't wanna make it too spicy for the kids. But I do think that would be really good in there. All right, and like I said, we are gonna add some minced garlic in here as well. We're just gonna sprinkle some on. All right, next we're gonna do about one cup of chicken broth. Just pour that all around. And I know some of y'all are gonna say you're washing the seasoning off. It's not gonna matter because it's all gonna cook in here together anyway. It'll be perfectly seasoned. We're also gonna add about a cup of heavy cream. I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. That all in there. And then the last ingredient for now are just some sun-dried tomatoes. These are the ones that come in the olive oil. I have used the dried sun-dried tomatoes in other recipes and it seems to work fine, especially in crock pot recipes where they have time to kind of rehydrate. Go ahead and just get some of these in. Try not to get too much of that oil in there but it's not gonna hurt it if you do. And I'm realizing maybe I should chop these or slice them or just buy the julienne ones, but this is all my store had, so I think it'll be fine. Get those in there. And that is pretty much it. Let me grab my lid and I'm gonna cook mine on high for probably about four hours. We're gonna serve this with some angel hair pasta. So I'm gonna let this cook all day and I'll check back in with y'all here in just a little bit. All right, y'all, we've been going about two and a half hours, but I like to just come in and kinda 
flip my chicken breast over anytime I'm doing something like this in the slow cooker. I guess just kind of gently stir everything around, making sure those flavors, you know, get all over all the chicken breast evenly and everything like that. So obviously we still have a little bit of time to go. So that all stirred up. I get the lid popped back on and I'll see y'all in probably about another hour, hour and a half. Alrighty, so our chicken has continued cooking. It's been almost four hours, I believe. Yes, it's on warm already. So I'm just gonna take my little tool, my little mix and chop, and I'm just gonna shred up my chicken with this tool. It is super tender. I'm barely putting any pressure on it at all. And I was hoping it would kind of break up the little tomatoes too. I think it's going to, since I didn't get the julienne sun-dried tomatoes. So I'm just gonna get everything broken up. It's already looking and smelling really good. Let me see if I can bring y'all up a little bit closer so you can kind of see what it's looking like. I'll just make sure I get the julienne tomatoes next time, but I think it'll be fine. They did break up a little bit. I don't know if y'all can tell that or not. It smells so good. All right, one more thing. So lastly, we're just gonna add in some cheese. I'm just gonna be using this five cheese Italian blend. You can use just Parmesan, really whatever kind that you want. I think I'm gonna stir in maybe a cup. Sorry if y'all hear my dishwasher going in the background. Now we're just gonna give this a stir. Get all that cheese nice and melted. And then over on the side, I told y'all I was gonna serve it with some angel hair, angel hair pasta. Of course, any pasta that you prefer will be great. And my serving of angel hair pasta over here. And now, let's just get some of this marry me chicken on here. I think it looks good? Yeah. This is for one of my kids, they are going off to another activity tonight so they're eating a little bit earlier you get the what we call the show plate a little bit of parmesan cheese on top which i know you love we call these plates that i show the show plate no picture plate and the other oh, picture plate because the rest of us eat on paper plates so if you do that don't feel bad neither do we or we do too all right y'all this was so easy it smelled so good only took four hours to cook all right y'all this one's super easy I hope you will give it a try. I'm just gonna be using my big iron skillet, just adding a little bit of avocado oil, and I have some chopped onions. Just gonna get that sauteing up a couple minutes. This recipe says to brown up your ground beef and your onion just together, but anytime it calls for chopped onion in something like this, I like to saute mine just a few minutes before I add in my ground beef or whatever it is. I like just a little bit of caramelization going on with my onions. Also, while that's working, I have another pot over here on the side. I'm just gonna boil up some of these egg noodles, the whole package, just according to the package directions. All right, my onions are starting to get a little bit of good color on those. Let's go ahead and add one pound of ground beef. We're gonna add about one fourth teaspoon of paprika. So I'm also gonna go in with that anti no nose everything seasoning. Just sprinkle some on. All right, so I went ahead and drained my meat. Like I said, I'm just gonna re-season just a little bit. I'm sure I didn't pour off too much of that, but just in case I pour off a lot of that seasoning. I'm also gonna add just a few little splashes of Worcestershire sauce. I'm also adding one cup of sour cream and then one can of cream of mushroom soup. Now we're just gonna stir everything together. All right, I'm just gonna bring this back up, let this simmer to get all nice and warm through while our egg noodles are finishing cooking up and they'll be ready to put all this together. All right, so you can totally just serve this over top of egg noodles, but I think I'm gonna pour mine in there today. And I can tell you just for making beef stroganoff in the past, this makes perfect leftovers. And also this is a really good make ahead meal. I'm actually making mine earlier than dinner time today. So I know when I'm ready to heat this back up, it'll still be perfect, but I can't wait. So let's go ahead and fix up a plate. Give it a little bit of parsley just for some color on top. 
there we go delicious dinner in only about 30 minutes and this would be a one skillet meal if it wasn't for just cooking the pasta on the side all right, that is 20 dinner ideas. I hope that if you've made it this far in the video, you found a recipe to try tonight. Also, feel free to save this video and kind of go back to it as a reference point whenever you find yourself in that dinner time rut. I hope you're all doing great. Please hit that subscribe button before you go, and I'll see you guys real soon in my next video. Bye, y'all.